and today we'll be talking about the five top 10 bands or five bands not top 10 but the top five bands that has influenced my life and this was the challenge that was put forward by uh, the Black Phoenix Entertainment and uh, you should check out his channel I'm uh, giving a little shout out to him so you can actually see him I'll put him in the cards above and of course in the description below the link to his channel uh, he rides a can -M spider and uh, this would be of course interesting for all my friends who ride a spider uh, check out his uh, channel check out his uh, his adventures and I think it'll be of uh, great interest to my friends and of course uh, some of my subscribers as well uh, so he put out this challenge uh, of the top uh, five bands that has influenced his life or uh, has been part of his life uh, as a challenge and I think I will accept that challenge and do so today so band number one now before I mention their name uh, let's do a little black story uh, I was born in the early 60s and that will make me a child of the 70s and uh, of course in the 70s, the rock was a little bit different from what it is today. Uh, in fact, they don't really have rock rock of the sort, what they call classic rock. But uh, more likely, it's more metal than anything else. In fact, in the 80s, that's when the, the metal movement started. Right? And how did I get to know this band? Well, when I was a kid, after church, uh, we all pack into the car and get onto a restaurant uh, for lunch. And my dad had an eight-track machine uh, installed in his uh, car, right? And at that time, uh, they would do a bootleg of uh, these the popular songs of the time, and he would be playing it throughout the, the journey. And one of the songs that stood out was a song called uh, Black Dog. And that got me into the rock scene. Now that song came from a group called Led Zeppelin. Right? And Led Zeppelin was uh, influential in that time. In fact, uh, there were a lot of great bands during that period. Um, and this, of course, was a British band. Uh, they are the ones that uh, heralded the second British invasion of music, so to speak. And um, of course, there were some really good uh, rock bands uh, of the 70s, right? The Creedence Clearwater Revival, uh, Bad Company, Free, Boston, Kansas, uh, and so forth. But I, I think the influence for us was mainly with the British rock music and, uh, of course, Led Zeppelin was uh, influential in that. So I got influenced by my dad uh, from his playing that bootleg 8-track. Uh, I'll put uh, a link below in the description of what an 8-track is. Uh, and basically, uh, I kind of fell in love with that band. Now, during that period of time, of course, uh, my mom wanted me to play a musical instrument and the piano was definitely out of the question. So, be, guys being guys, boys being boys, would gravitate towards the guitar. But unfortunately, she insisted that I took uh, the classical guitar and actually took uh, music uh, theory, so I actually learned it formally. Um, so, obviously, when we hit high school, secondary school, uh, there was a battle of the bands and invariably, I was uh, playing that song, uh, much to the unhappiness of the teachers, but uh, very happy students, of course, right? Music of the times. Being a guitarist, of course, uh, most of the bands in my list, uh, I was influenced by the guitarist, and of course the, 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 the guitarist for Led Zeppelin was Jimmy Page, and he was voted for many years the best guitarist in the guitar magazine or the guitar world magazine or the guitar player magazine i think that's what it's called and uh 
in fact he was in my mind anyway the still the best uh, guitarist around not because he was he could do a lot of good solos or was very technical uh, although he was but he could play a multitude of uh, stringed instruments in fact he played a lute in one of their songs uh, the Battle of Evermore, that's the one, right? The Battle of Evermore from uh, Led Zeppelin was the one that he played the lute and it was very uh, rustic. It wasn't really very rock and roll, you know, considering the kind of band that they were. They were more blues rock than anything else. And he also was one of the few, first few, to actually put a bow to his electric guitar, which created a lot of interesting sounds. So Led Zeppelin took me to uh, the 70s and to the early part of the 80s and uh, again music with as if everyone is very influential in me as a guitarist and that time uh, I wasn't doing any gigs or anything like that but uh, you know jam sessions and friends and stuff and uh, I was introduced by a fellow musician to this other group which brings me to uh, band number two right, so the band number two has been also around since the 60s and they're called Pink Floyd. Now when they first started in the 60s, their lead singer was Sid Barrett and they had uh, the unusual kind of music. It was almost rock, it was almost uh, something else. You can't really put a, a finger on it. But um, when Sid Barrett passed and Roger Waters took over, that's when the music started to change. And what really attracted me to uh, Pink Floyd was the fact that they did concept albums, meaning that every album had an idea, had ideology, had a thing to say, right? So in their case, the first two albums, uh, The Dark Side of the Moon and Wish You Were Here were all about the music industry. And the album that I really loved the most Animals was actually taken out from uh, George Orwell's uh, or adapted from George Orwell's Animal Farm. You know about the social, geosocial uh, situation of that time or geopolitical situation of that time. Uh, the communist, socialist, capitalism, and so forth. And they, that album, they really took uh, the music to another level, combining rock with uh, synthesizers, creating interesting sounds and how it merged into their music uh, which is what attracted to me but how did it change my life well um, in the mid 80s I had decided to go back to college uh, and uh, of course the hotel management was something I was really interested in so uh, I actually went to Switzerland uh, to study and during that period, we had exchange students from America, uh, primarily from uh, the Johnson & Wales School in New Jersey, and invariably, uh, I had a girlfriend from that school. And she was into rock as well, like me, uh, uh, although she was mostly uh, the hair metal of the 80s. But she did knew uh, about Pink Floyd, and Pink Floyd became very commercial with their Wall album because uh, I don't know how it just gotten really good and really big in the commercial uh, scene. And of course, it, it helped at the fact that they had a movie as well. So, um, she knew the Wall, but she didn't do the rest. And I kind of helped her get into the, the Pink Floyd scene. We spent many a days sitting uh, in our apartment, listening to the music and drinking and hanging out with friends. And uh, somewhere in the late 80s, we actually uh, went to Paris and saw Pink Floyd live, which was a, a really mind-blowing experience. Because uh, they took laser light shows and the entire show to another level. So that's Pink Floyd and how it influenced me. But you know, rock from the 80s, uh, then graduated into the 90s, and that was the beginning of uh, the grunge movement. And invariably, I started listening to it as well. 
you know, at that time in the, in the mid 90s, I was already doing fairly well uh, in my career. I was in the hotel industry. I was uh, a manager, the food and beverage manager. And my good friend, his name was Andreas, uh, which translated to uh, Andrew in English. And that's my name, by the way. Uh, my name's Andrew. Uh, so the two Andrews were like uh, best of buddies. And he would listen to all the kind of music I, I listened to. And the fact that, that he rode a motorcycle just like I did it uh, was uh, an equal bonus. So every other evening we would head on down to our favorite pub. Uh, it was an English pub and they had uh, a jukebox, right? And the jukebox, uh, what he would do is, when you get there a bit early, you'll grab a stool, park himself in front of uh, the jukebox and pump as much coins as he had in his pockets into the jukebox and just basically selected every Pearl Jam album there was. So, group number three, Pearl Jam, right? And they're the ones that started me off into uh, the grunge period of course uh, the other bands that are really great during that period of course was Nirvana, Stone Temple Pilots, Soundgarden, Mud Honey and so forth but because he introduced me to that band and I was really as a guitarist really into uh, the sound of uh, Pearl Jam especially their first album called Ten very round very full sounding guitars, low. They're the ones that introduced the drop B, which made it even more fuller, more rounder. Uh, and, you know, it, it was the kind of rock that I really love to listen to, right? So, I was still considered rock, even though it's, it's, the genre was, uh, was grunge. And it was influential because, uh, you know, it cemented my friendship with uh, this guy, Andreas, and the fact that, uh, like I said, he loved rock. He rode a motorcycle. I remember it was a 1,000cc uh, Kawasaki. Uh, and at that time, I was riding a, a Honda 1,000cc race bike as well. Uh, and we did do go on tours across the border to Malaysia. Um, but the, the, final, the final thing was, that uh, we were born on the same day, so you know, same character and so forth. And, and I think that's a friendship I treasure. But but Pearl Jam was uh, also um, influential to me in that sense because of my friendship with him. Uh, invariably, I also saw Pearl Jam live in concert and uh, was with my then girlfriend, who never appreciated the music that I listened to, but. Uh, could, kind of understood after watching uh, watching the band live right. so from the 90s into the 2000s uh, spelled the end of grunge and uh, rock in general moved on to metalcore I have nothing against uh, metal uh, it's just that uh, the chugging of the guitars weren't as um, attractive to me as it was with uh, the other rock bands. Uh, it stopped being melodic and, and so forth. Um, but from the metal scene came the new metal scene, uh, which brought about uh, quite a number of big groups, right? Like P.O.D., Linkin Park, uh, and the like. Uh, but the one group that stood out, uh, because they were initially called uh, New Metal, but actually have become alternative to this day. And that group, group number four, is Incubus. Now, we, as, as in all music, we hear it on the radio or we hear it from some other source. In my case, the first time I heard the song, or a song from Incubus, was from... Uh, movie or the soundtrack of the movie Little Nicky. My girlfriend uh, wanted to watch a funny movie or a comedy and uh, invariably that was the only one around so we decided to watch it and in that movie I heard this song which I found out later was called Pardon Me by uh, Incubus 
and I was pretty attracted to it because the guitar, the sounds from the guitar that was created by the guitarist was very unique. They too had that nice low crunching growl of a guitar that I was really into and invariably uh, that's what I was attracted to but I, at that time we didn't have the app called Sound, app, uh, Soundhound so I couldn't determine what it was. So the next day I went to Tower Records uh, in search of this elusive group and I guess they were popular anyway because uh, as I was coming up uh, the escalator in the mall blaring out of his speakers was exactly this song Pardon Me from Incubus so I didn't have to look for it I just went to the counter and said hey, dude uh, what's the name of this song and who's playing it and the guy told me and I went and gotten their uh, album straight off right and then have been getting all the albums ever since the one thing that i like about uh, incubus was that even though they were new metal which uh, was interesting kind of a genre but they've evolved into uh, alternative rock and their music uh, it's always been different they've always experimented the sound of the guitar was very very unique and uh I don't know, it kind of, it, it, it really drove me and and, I, and that's the time when I was getting back into playing the guitar and being in a band and so forth and I actually uh, was so um, taken by the group that I actually added a couple of songs from their, rep from their albums to my repertoire when we played at uh, local gigs or what have you. Um, so in that sense, they were that influential to me, right? That's a group that I really like. Uh, their music differs from uh, period to period all the way till today. Uh, I think their, their best song, or the song that I like the most, is a song called Anna Molly um, from Incubus uh, because of its uh, sounds, uh, the different instruments that were being played on it. Uh, and and the fast strumming of the guitar was really unique, something that took me a while uh, to get to, uh, right for me to play at a gig. So, Incubus was probably, uh, although of course there were other bands that I like, you know, the, once in a while I'll listen to some metal like uh, Slipknot and Avenged Sevenfold and to my Valentine and, and, and so forth, but uh, rock was still missing. Right? Even even Incubus after a while evolved into something completely different. Uh, nothing wrong with it. Uh, it's just that I, I was yearning for that low growl of the guitars and everything else. And so from the late 2000s to the present. Uh, I suddenly got into uh, from listening, of course, from watching YouTube and listening to the radio and stuff like that. Uh, the European side of things, because the Europeans somehow didn't, although they did have a lot of great metal bands, they um, they did not uh, go too far. Uh, in fact, uh, their music became a little bit different in a sense that uh, they were doing more symphonic rock uh, than anything else. Uh, and most of them were female lead vocalists. Which to me was unique and, and of course being operatic and, and, and symphonic, uh, all the female vocalists had a wide range, in fact operatic range as well. Which brings me to this uh, the group that I like which wasn't that way uh, and that group which is uh, group number five uh, they're called Lacuna Coil they hail from uh, Italy and their music has been very consistent and they are the, uh, the ones that had that low growl guitars that I love and the fact that they were very versatile uh, in the fact that they could do all the music they collaborated with a lot of other groups uh, and also they did a really awesome cover of a Depeche Mode uh, song called Enjoy the Silence. You should check it out. Enjoy the Silence by Lacuna Coil. Uh, it was a cover of a Depeche Mode song and it really showed off uh, 
the lead singer's uh, vocal range. Now, the lead singer's uh, name is uh, Christina Rabia, and she on her own has uh, a solo album, and she actually collaborated with a lot of people, uh, notably Alter Bridge, which is the offshoot of Creed. And, uh, and to my surprise, she did a collaboration with Megadeth. Now, Megadeth had this song uh, in the early 90s called uh, A Tout Le Monde. And I like that song. Right? The, re the, the song was really good. It was melodic. Uh, had a great guitar solo. Uh, but when she collaborated and redid it again with Megadeth later on, she added a vocal range to it that was really unique. So you should check it out. Megadeth and Christina Rabia. A two of them all. That's the song. So those are my five bands and how they influenced me in my life. And again, I'd like to uh, give a shout out to uh, Black Phoenix Entertainment. Again, I'll leave his uh, link to his channel below. And his challenge was, of course, name the top five bands that has influenced you in your life. And that was mine. Uh, so guys, feel free to uh, comment below and give me your suggestions uh, of uh, top five bands uh, or bands that you think that influence you. And if you, and if you can, why not go ahead and do this challenge and list the top five bands that have influenced you in your life as well so thank you very much for watching this video uh, my name is Fletch uh, if you haven't done so yet please uh, click the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell notification uh, to let you know when is the next video that I'm putting up uh, you guys ride safe and you have a good one